Good morning to you. Mark Sada, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for Tuesday, September 25th, 2018. Let's take a look at what's happening out there. A few areas to watch this 98L, maybe some of the DNA leftovers, whatever you want to call it, of Florence, trying to become a tropical depression over the warm waters of the Gulf Stream, drier mid-level air, upper-level winds not being too ideal, are keeping this from developing rapidly. Nevertheless, some showers, heavier rain bands from time to time for portions of eastern North Carolina, east of I-95 by a good bit, and really east of uh, the US-17 corridor, to be honest with you. Areas like Wilmington, up through Surf City, Moorhead City, Atlantic Beach, Emerald Isle, and then the Outer Banks, Ocracoke, Rodanthe, which is where I'm headed later today could see some enhanced rain, locally rough seas, rip current threat high, things like that, um, but not expected to develop into anything that would bring any kind of a storm surge or power outages, just a little bit of rubbing some salt in the wounds, so to speak, as North Carolinians recover from Hurricane Florence, uh, which is still obviously impacting areas as rivers continue to, most of them fall, except the Waccamaw River down here in South Carolina, uh, really a, a problem. You're probably seeing that on Twitter if you follow any of the news outlets in Horry County and Georgetown County in South Carolina. Elsewhere, we do have what was left here of Kirk, which may try to come back and become a depression or a storm, but that's a lot of energy there, a lot of moisture, and that's going to be headed in the direction of the Windward Islands here over the next few days and we'll take a look at that in a moment in terms of what to expect. Uh, a little bit of a flare-up here in the Western Caribbean, uh, probably just some kind of a surface trough and when you see it stretched out like that you say okay not much to worry about and the upper level winds are kind of screaming across that way anyhow so I don't see much development from there but as I'll show you at the end of today's update we will need to watch this general region over here in about 10 days or so. And that coincides with the sort of second peak of the hurricane season that occurs around October 10th or so. Uh, looking at the National Hurricane Center chart, here's 98L, 50-50 shot. Uh, we'll just have to see what happens, okay? You know, I mean, it could get organized just enough for uh, 6 to 12 hours to become a depression or even a storm but you know what it's not going to matter too much the impacts will be the same uh, showers thunderstorms and the coastal waters moving on shore from time to time loosely organized so I wouldn't be too concerned with it it's just kind of a again adding insult to injury Leslie though this will be an interesting feature it's just going to dance around out here in the subtropical Atlantic over the next few days and once it becomes more organized, it'll probably become a hurricane and really add to the ACE score accumulated cyclone energy for the year. And then here is the remnants of Kirk. Here we have that area, and it's going to be moving towards the Windward Islands over the next few days. And we can uh, look at that in a moment on the GFS first real quick in the Pacific. Not a lot, you know, in terms of threats to land. We do have Rosa, Tropical Storm Rosa. And if we look at the map for that, maybe if it'll load, are you going to work for me? Maybe it's just not going to work. But this is going to basically, there it is, uh, be steered. And this is sort of the first hint at what I've been talking about. You're going to go west and then turn northwest far enough off that we don't have to worry about it over here along the Baja. But I think this is a warning shot of things to come where eventually we're going to have development that's going to come up towards the Baja or mainland Mexico, maybe even up here towards the southwest United States later on down the road. Just something to keep in mind. All right, so looking at the GFS here, let's bring this back to the beginning. I've shifted it over to the western Atlantic uh, to kind of get a better zoomed in uh, perspective of things. Uh, and really, I just want you to pay attention to this area right down here when I put this into motion, which let's do that now. And we'll speed it up a little bit. So this is the next five days, and watch over here on stage right, our system, the remnants of Kirk, enter, and this is the 850 millibar vorticity. It's, you know, enough of uh, 
a concern in what I'm seeing in the modeling there that tropical storm conditions, 40 mile per hour winds, heavy rains with bands, etc. Yeah, you know, that could be expected in about the next day or two. It comes into the shot there. Let's just freeze it once we get, sorry about that. Let's just zoom out a little bit and we'll see it come into the shot there and then we'll zoom back in. So what is that? That's about 53 hours. So two days from now, roughly, uh, you can start expecting some impacts here within 40 to 60 hours. Uh, Barbados, St. Vincent, the Grenadines, um, maybe up towards Martinique. In fact, let's just take a look at the geography of the area. You guys know it, but for those of you that might not be too familiar, uh, a track somewhere in this area seems reasonable to me, and that's a lot of rainfall, a lot of thunderstorm activity. So anywhere from Grenada, which is down here, certainly Barbados, as I mentioned, St. Vincent, uh, St. Lucia, Martinique, maybe Dominica, maybe Guadeloupe. You never know. Uh, looking at the modeling here, you can see where these islands are. There's Guadeloupe, there's Dominica, I think, right? St. Vincent, the Grenadines, Barbados right there. So I would be more concerned in Barbados than anywhere else. And am I concerned that it's going to become a hurricane? No. And that's not the point. The point is going to bring a lot of rainfall. And you guys know how that can be down there. Flooding rain, you got the elevations, you know all about it. So be prepared, be ready for this, okay? It's going to bring a ton of rainfall. And if you look at that moisture envelope, that's a lot of moisture, that's a lot of energy. It does not have to bundle and become a wind machine for it to become a pain and suffering machine. Seriously, we, we know that all too well. Let's make sure we remember that. In the coming days, this tweet from Ben Knoll, Again, suggesting that we start looking in this vicinity uh, in about 10 to 15 days as the pattern changes and we lower the pressures overall. The GFS starting to pick up on that way in the long range. Uh, maybe something coming out of the Northwest Caribbean Sea. And this is the region that is normally favored this time of year. Heading into October, we shift the emphasis from the deep tropics out here more towards this area. Uh, and the southwest Atlantic Basin as well, much closer to land areas, and we'll see. It wouldn't surprise me at all, especially with the high ocean heat content that we still have residing in the Western Caribbean Sea, in the Gulf of Mexico, undisturbed, and it's not over. You remember we had Nate in October, the first week or so of October last year, uh, so maybe this will mirror that and we'll just keep an eye on it. It's still far enough out in time, but pretty neat that we can sort of see those patterns as they come and at least have a heads up. Okay, something might be developing later on, and we need to keep an eye on it. What The wonders of science. All right, that's it from me for today. I'm getting ready to jump in the Tahoe. It's not the Tahoe. It's another Tahoe uh, that we got last year as a sort of a backup doesn't have all the weather equipment on it. It does have my logos, but um, not all the other stuff. And uh, we were going to use it as a like spare parts for the Tahoe, but the Tahoe <laughs> is just too far gone at this point. Um, it's destined for a museum or somewhere. I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to be jumping in my uh, other Tahoe. It's an 01, exactly like the one that's got all the weather stuff on it probably made within a few months in the same plant in Texas. I'm, I'm not kidding. We, we bought it in Raleigh last January of last year, 2017, and uh, or was it March? I don't know. <laughs> I forget. Um, and I've used it for a couple of, you know, used it a lot here during uh, Florence. Uh, anyway, I'm going to use it to go up and grab the equipment from Oriental and Rodanthe. And I'll post some video clips or whatever along the way if I see anything interesting. And then I can finally, hopefully, put the Florence, close the books on the Florence field work and start working on the documentary. Wait until you see that. We'll talk about that later. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. Thanks for watching, as always. I appreciate it. More than you know, it's great to have you on the other side listening and watching and learning from me. I am Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.